What's your favorite scary movie? We all go a little mad sometimes. Get away from her, you bitch! Hi, I'm Chucky, and I'm your friend to the end. This is my boomstick! Swallow this. Hey everybody, and welcome back to uh, another episode of the Arrow in the Head show. Uh, I'm here, of course, with uh, my bum buddy, Lance Velchek. How you, you doing, Lance? I'm doing good, buddy. It's good to uh, see you back in the realm that I'm used to, the digital world. The box. The box, baby. The box. In case you guys don't know, Lance and I were at VidCon. We got to interact in person, which was nice, refreshing. How would you enjoy VidCon, by the way? No, it was good. It was interesting. I learned a lot. I mean, the the vibe was definitely a, a younger crowd. Overall, I thought the interesting thing was the information. And, you know, I got to, like, meet people I work with, have a couple drinks, Chat and talk movies, man. That was a good time. It's it's good to be um, out west. I never go out there. The weather's weird. I don't, I don't really like it. It's it's, it's too dry, too cold. What do you think, man? Oh, I got one word, bro. Larry. She, she she didn't even she. BB, what's going on, BB? BB, what's going on? My yeah. man. Uh, you, I don't. I, mean, I remember there's a guy named Larry. I don't know who he is. He was, he was your yeah, best was, friend though. A podcaster, I guess, called uh, Larry. And for some reason, every time I would walk the floor, his his poster would catch my eye and I would just look at it. I don't know. There was something about the poster that just transfixed me. So what I got out of VidCon is Larry. Um, of course, I learned a lot about YouTube and such. And I agree with you. Uh, you know, I already feel like an old cunt, but I felt like an older cunt. You know, I, I know about the film business, the film industry. I know about the star system. The new generation is the world they're into. And I'm still watching, you know, movies on VHS, you know, so, but it was nice to uh, catch up to it and learn a lot uh, in terms of where everything's going. So, yeah, so I dug it. Lance and I were actually uh, having a couple drinks, like like the hotel bar. This is my last drink. One more hour in this town, I'll kill somebody. And we were going through the comments. Uh, We found the movie we're going to talk about today, which is Wes Craven's New Nightmare. Before we get into that, let's go into what are you drinking? I'm still in the same month, which is still before payday. So I uh, I have this pre-mix hurricane stuff. Sometimes I make, uh, I told you I make like a jungle juice for Joe Bob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just found out that if you use the pre-mix of the hurricane, you can just add vodka and Red Bull to it. So I got a little bit of, uh, I got a little bit of a mix. Just something, you know, something light, I should say. Okay. What about you? Um, I, I'm going, I'm going easy, smooth and easy. Jameson. Oh, you like those pre pre Yeah, these pre-made Jamesons. It's ginger and lime and that little nice little taste of Jameson at the same time. 6% alcohol. So that means oh, uh, nothing. You know, I won't get out of hand uh, during the show. Give you a cheers. Everybody cheers. Cheers. cheers to all of you, by the way. and <laughs> To all my friends. Huh? To all my friends. To all my friends. <laughs> and uh, thanks, guys, by the way, um, for our last episode on Freddy's Dead. Uh, you know, got some good views, some good comments, and, uh, you know, Lance and I really appreciate the support. So thank you for that, and uh, let's make uh, Wes Craven's New Nightmare uh, a runaway hit. Okay, so quickly, for those who don't know, um, Wes Craven's New Nightmare was the seventh entry. It came a little bit after Freddy's Dead, of course. Freddy's Dead was actually a, a pretty decent hit, considering that the last uh, entry, number five, didn't do so well. But critically, it, it was it was panned. It was shit upon. It was one of those things where it made money, but everybody made fun of it. And like we talked about the last episode, rightfully so. Though you and me obviously have some positive things that come with, I think, the passage of time. Uh, it is definitely, and I think we both agree, not the place to leave Freddy Krueger. Um, no. You know what I love about Wes Craven's New, Ni- New Nightmare? One of uh, like my favorite things about it is that, number one, you don't have to have seen the sequels to see it. You just have to have seen the first film. Uh, even Wes Craven himself actually said before he wrote Wes Craven's New Nightmare, he watched all the sequels and he's like, the story doesn't make any fucking sense. So he just referred to the OG and of course the, the yeah, I said the OG with a straight face, the mammoth success that freddy krueger had you know with, with the sequels it's a companion piece of part one wouldn't you agree it does what rocky balboa did in that entry yeah. which is like it lets you know the other ones happened and this one does like make a little poke at action number six which i wrote down we'll talk about the original five very popular sequels uh, i love all the other ones but i absolutely agree um which was the only way to do it and i like the sequels but yeah i like them because they become convoluted and weird and goofy and, and it, it's fun 
But, uh, you know, the fact that Wes Craven was able to come back and do something that is, to me, impossible, which is make Freddy kind of creepy again. The first hour, I, I think Freddy was creepy as fuck, man. Well, sure, but I'm watching it as an older guy. I mean, yeah, I, this one actually messed with me more as a kid than anyone else. You're, the, you're the first saying, one. You're did. saying I'm a pansy, or no? But I, I thought we're talking in respect to like who we are now. It's like it's kind of creepy, and that's impressive. Life, <laughs> life is tough, man. The fact that New Nightmare from '94 can get me, I think, is good. Yeah. But no, but you're right though. I mean, it is. It's the creepiest Freddy. How about that? Hands down. And I, this out does the first one million to one in terms of being unsettling. Um, but, and I think a lot of that comes down to the fact that he doesn't talk. I like that. I like that a lot. I was like, man, that's a cool idea. Because even the first, I mean, he's only in it for a handful of minutes, but he still talks. And then, which, let's be fair, makes Freddy who he is. Yeah. I could see people hating this, and I know they do uh, because. Wait, 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 what? People hate Wes Craven's new nightmare? So, this is actually really important to, to kind of get out of the way. We are at that age now where people who were born like after 9 11 are having movie opinions, and that's seeping into what we knew. I grew up thinking this was great, and people loved it. Hmm. But We've lived too long, and now there's other opinions in the in the, the realm. So I've seen some people, even in comments on our old videos, shitting on New Nightmare. So it, it exists, yeah. The, what I seem to get out of the comments or reading like bad reviews, because I'm always fascinated by why people hate things, which is like, it's not truly Freddy. And it's like, yeah, but that's why this is good. Do, how do you make Freddy scary? It's like you take away what made him himself, which is like the lines. And, and he still little, has a couple of lines, you know? What very is few. Yeah. Very few, uh, but at the very end too. That's and that's my least favorite part. I got cool talky Freddy, and even in Nightmare on Elm Street one, I, he still talks more than he does in this one. It's funny because I read that, of course, Freddy. It's a new look for Freddy in this picture, but I read that Wes Craven uh, down the road regretted changing the look, and yes. he said the old, the old cliche, you know, it's not broken, don't fix it. Uh, sometimes I think it was smart. Sometimes I think it was a mistake. I don't know. I've gone around and around with that in my mind over the years. I personally uh, like the change of look, uh, you know, the trench coat, he looked bigger, you yeah. know, he looked like Jack for some reason, or am I yeah. tripping? No, his hand was, was like muscled. It was like a giant, nice forearm yeah. with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, his look is amazing in this. It's it's superior. His, yeah. his, his wide, weird, sunken in eyes. And I think the, the, the lenses, the contact lenses really pop in this one, as opposed to, you know, the other entries. If they yeah. use them, actually, okay. I don't even know. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you know. And you guys know that the movie was inspired by Wes Craven because uh, Heather Langenkamp had a stalker at a certain point, getting creepy phone calls, you know, guys showing up at her house and stuff like that. And if I remember correctly, she even had to relocate and kind of go into hiding. Although I don't think the stalker came from Nightmare on M Street. I'm pretty sure he, Mr. Stalker was aware of it, but it came from Just the Ten of Us, which was a sitcom. Ironically enough, uh, Brooke Thies from Nightmare on M Street 4 was also in it. And that was another girl, is brunette. I forgot her name, sadly. She was in that sitcom, and she was one of the girls who was a passenger in the opening of Nightmare on Elm Street 2. So three Elm Street alumni are in just the 10 of us. So Wes Craven actually asked uh, Heather Langenkamp, do you mind if I incorporate that into the film? And of course she said, no, I don't mind. There's a lot of stuff like that in the film which mirrors reality. So for example, Heather Langenkamp's husband is truly an effects artist. So in the films, an effects artist, not played by the same guy because Heather's uh, real husband didn't want to do it. He was asked to do it. He's like, nah, I don't want to do it. So they got this guy. I forgot. I have his name written down, but he, all I remember about him, he had fantastic hair. He like has that, a great hair. Yeah. That was quite a main, you know, and, and that hair deserves a fucking Oscar if you ask me, but uh, I digress. I love the documentary style, like the way he shoots it for the first hour anyways. Craven goes back to the old tricks of part one using everyday, which also he used in Shocker to some degree, everyday um, things to scare us, you know, like creepy phone calls or uh, earthquakes. Uh, but there's a lot of like little things like that, which made the film for me uh, really unnerving at first. And of course, using, you know, a kid as, as a plot device, you know, it's a child. So that could either make the film scarier or you just want to throw the kid out the window because kids in movies have a tendency to be annoying. Uh, what do you think of Miko uh, Hughes? I probably was close to the kid's age when I saw this movie for the first time back in the day. So like, I've always liked him. I think he, he does well. I mean, there's a couple of times I don't really think it's his fault. I, you know, I, I do blame Wes Craven like that. He does like the voices like, it's too late. It's like, okay, that's a little cheesy. But he freaks out well and he like days sort of creepy kid thing, like from like the ring um, that, that would have come out a lot later, that that way of playing the kid. I like that. You um, know, it's he a wasn't, cat cemetery. Oh, uh, Gage, right? Gage? Yeah. 
Yeah, I hate, uh, but I'm the one guy that hates that movie. So it's like, but he was good in that too for being the kid. I'll give it, you know, he, he gets hit really well by the truck. No fair. Oh, what a dick. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. No, fair, no. Uh, he walks away. No, actually, a funny, a funny anecdote about that is that, which I thought was really out of line, at some point during the shoot, Wes Craven wanted a reaction from the kid. Oh, yeah. Wasn't getting it. Oh, you know the story? Yeah, it's, it's kind of messed up, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's fucked up, no? So, you know, Craven talked to dad, and dad said, I'll take care of it. So the dad went and whispered to the, in the kid's ear, well, I'm sorry to tell you, your mom's dead, but if you act good, I'll get you a happy meal. And he nailed it after that, you know? I'm like, who's... Your mom's dead? Really, bro? I don't know. Poor little kid. Poor little kid. Yeah, the kid did well, man. I mean, he's kind of like the the main character in in a way. Like he's the one that essentially is is fighting off Freddy, or, or at least involved with him throughout the entire thing. But it's been a while since I sat down and watched the entire thing. I mean, I, I know it pretty well, but what I love about kind of waiting for a movie is is the little things that I don't remember. And when the first time she gets a phone call, the very first one in the movie, and I swear. I looked it up and I can't find anything on it, so I could be crazy, but I'm gonna show it in the set it and we'll see what people see in the comments. It's the guy who does the killer's worst from Scream. Hello? One, two. Hello? Freddy's coming for you. It is the exact voice, I swear. And then after that, it's not. But it, I mean, I know that guy's voice because it's, it's so iconic, but I can't again, it's, I can't find it in the credits. You know. Give it to that we'll, cocktail you keep drinking, man. They pay you to screw that bear. Well, I, I no, I, was, I had no cocktails when I watched it. I swear, but I'm gonna put it in the comments. I was gonna say when you mentioned her husband not taking the job, I, I like that only for the reason that I think the biggest flaw here is that it's so meta and it, it's so true to real life that besides Heather Langenkamp and a few others, a kid again, um, Hughes, which I, I thought did pretty damn well. Um, anybody that plays himself kind of is a bit rough. Like man. Robert Shea, I love him, but I mean, I was like, oh man, not an actor. You know? He's not an actor. Yeah, yeah, and even Craven, which yeah, is funny. He's not no, no, no. I mean, he had a great part in Body Parts, which he did well. But I mean, for this, he had a lot of dialogue. And it's like, it got a little like, it, it took me out a bit. Again, it's a nitpick. I, at the end of the day, I get it why they did it. Because this was the first time they really want to make a real movie. Like I said, this documentary almost type of style. So they wanted people to play everybody. Even though I almost feel bad, like Lynn Shea had to play a nurse. It's like, we can't, yeah. we can't make her Lynn Shea, you know? She's an actress. That's true. That's true. <laughs> um, Blame Bob Shea, I guess. Yeah, right. Yeah, but... Overall, I mean, I, I dug that aspect, even if it is a bit flawed and it's a bit of a nitpick. But there's something I'd like to actually talk about, which is what we kind of touched upon in the beginning. Like you said, this is the first, I would say more than two thirds of this entire movie, almost probably the entire thing, except for the last like 15 minutes. It's kind of like a 90s thriller. There's creepy phone calls, there's earthquakes, there's yeah. kids saying creepy shit. There's that scene that's almost out of the omen where he's like on the top of this really cool the looking rocket. Uh, rocket ship, but he's reaching yeah. for God and the parents are freaking out. It's like he's that stuff. That actually. Yeah, yeah, but because God didn't take him. Has. God didn't take him. Yeah, which is, ah, yeah. oh, man, it's like chokes me up now. Like, you know, in that, real life, that rocket, Miko Hughes' dad bought it after the shoot. Which I think is awesome because you know what? Are, they don't make stuff like that. I mean, I don't know. Uh, you got younger kids and you're around parks. But when I was a kid, we had cool, dangerous shit like that. That doesn't exist yeah. now. They're all mass produced. So the fact that, you know, he has that cool little thing, it's like, yeah, I used to play and stuff that kill you. That yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> and, uh, that was we're little, my childhood, you know? Yeah, we're a little bit tougher. You know, it's everything's, there's no uh, no rubber. In now, my you gotta ride. <laughs> now you got to ride a bike with a helmet. A, a, a smart idea that I could just imagine not going down well with people. But why well, I love it, because Freddy's not in this movie. He's not. Once in a while, once in a blue moon. Uh, but it's not even dream. I mean, even the dreams are more or less her just having weird visions, but like the earthquake cracking the, the claw yeah, marks into the wall awesome. or the TV just being on when it's unplugged. It's like, that's kind of stuff. And I, I was like, hey, for being so restrained, I'm impressed, man. Yeah. Like I, I knew he wasn't in this a lot, but he's in it less than I thought. I was like, that's awesome. Like, well done, Craven. So I still think regardless, all that stuff worked. And I'm, I'm happy to say he he held back. I, you know, I can imagine Bob Shea reading the script. It's like, we're going to have Freddy in this more. You know, they, you know it's, it's like it's like having Jaws 5 and they don't show the shark until the last 20 minutes. It's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's uh, What actually are some of your favorite uh, scenes, if I may ask? She's at the hospital and there's the nurse. I can't think of her name because I don't care. I just thought of her as this evil bitch. And she, I okay, mean, she's yeah, like, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and she's breaking rights i mean like like I, i'm not gonna lie to you pardon me like they sit nancy down she's questioning her i'm like get where's your lawyer where's your counsel i'd be like bitch i'm not talking to you for one second am i under arrest am i being charged with the crime am i not i'm leaving but again i'm grumpier than her uh and her kids in uh dylan's in with the babysitter 
and Freddy finally comes in and he has the hat and he's dragging across while we're, re- we're redoing the scene from the first one. Yeah. Is that there's, it's not a scene set in shadows like in uh, the bedroom of the first movie. It's a, it's a hospital room. Yeah, so right. it is lit to shit here, and it, it is yeah, nothing's hidden, and I like that. I, that, that. That takes balls. I remember uh, an effects artist once said, like you know, um, when you're not confident through shot, you want to shadow it, you know. And this, it was just I mean, can you imagine like every bright light. And I was like, I loved it, I loved it, man. Um, but I, I'm assuming is that not one of your favorite scenes? I mean, do you want to jump in and tell it's me? One, a different it's one? one of my favorite bits. Um, Cloud Freddy. Green, it wasn't green screen back then. It was what blue screen. What was it called? Uh, I mean, he was it was composite for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a little rough. It's but a little rough. Freddy coming out, and then you have all these Freddies like behind a fence coming in. Yeah. Not, I don't remember if the movie actually stipulated it or not, but not, yes, stipulated. Big word for Johnny. That Freddy represents the embodiment of evil in the world. It's they mentioned he's an, it's an ancient evil entity that, that yeah. has been around. So I mean, yeah, I guess so if you think about it. So, you know, all those Freddies coming toward the thing, the Cloud Freddy, I thought it was really cool. So I love that scene. Of course, I, I love the mirror scenes to the original, you know, the phone scene, the ceiling kill scene. When he comes out of the bed, which is kind comes of... Comes out of the uh, closet, starts fighting her. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, and the number yeah, one. Isn't that where he says, uh, you miss me? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. it. It's when he starts talking a little more. The, 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 I think one of the best scenes that I didn't remember is at the very end, right before she goes into the lair, she's talking with uh, Saxton. In that scene, it, it, he turns into the dad and he has a different yeah. uniform. Yeah, and she turns into Nancy. Yeah. Same, yeah. And all of a sudden, she's like, and she realizes what she has to do. She's like, I love you too, dad. And they like kiss on the cheek or something. And then goes back and it's the house with the blue door, not the red door. I was like, that. I didn't remember that scene at all. Like at all. I was like, oh, I, I didn't remember it turning into Nightmare on Elm Street 1. That's awesome. Well, it overplayed down. Then she has to take all the sleeping pills. Yeah. It's like it's little breadcrumbs. Yeah. <laughs> Smarter than it should have been. And let's admit ahead of its time. Because I know he didn't write screen, but clearly after watching this, I mean, he had a voice. It wasn't always Kevin Williamson because there's a lot of scream in this. I think just obviously polished and, and told through a fictional story. Yeah, well, William to, was more, you know, was more about um, the dialogue and the, the movie references. I hated that trend. You know, when H2O kind of followed up with it and then, oh, there's the car in Psycho uh, because Janet Lee is there. I'm like, fuck off, man. Just tell, make a movie. Stop using these cheap fucking pop culture it, thing. It, I don't know. I mean, if I'm correct, uh, I don't think this did well. I don't, I don't necessarily think it bombed per se, but I don't think it, it, didn't, it, it didn't make uh, final nightmare money. How about no, that? exactly. At this point, let's, let's jump into what we don't like because we have similar things. Um, well, which, before uh, we do, I just want to actually uh, mention this because it's, it was kind of a cool moment for me. Uh, and I want to share it with you guys. You know, I was a, I've always been a John Saxon fan, you know, from Black Christmas and Nightmare on Elm Street, of course, uh, Enter the Dragon. I got to have dinner at his house. With him and his wife. Dude, if I dig up, I have a picture. He, he did sign a picture. Actually, this is ironic because Mr. Saxon, you know, God rest his soul. I, w- I was really heartbroken to, when he passed. There was one, one rule. He'll talk about anything, but you can't talk about Bruce Lee. And I never knew why. I, I assumed he was sick of talking about Bruce Lee and why that rule was implemented. But ironically enough, at the end of our you know our dinner, his wife cooked a beautiful meal for us. I geeked out. So can I get an autograph? Yeah, sure. And he gave me a picture. He signed a picture of Enter the Dragon, him, him and Bruce together. So it was kind of weird that I can't talk about him, but that's the picture I get. No, it was a great moment. Complete gentleman. And uh, we were talking about working together on something and uh, it, didn't, it didn't come together. So I'm happy that. I got to meet the guy. So, uh, you know what? Let's just have a toast to Mr. Saxon. Sure, sir. Well, and he kicked ass in this movie. And his last scene Did is becoming becoming uh, her dad at the very end. And, like, you know, telling her that he loves her. And uh, it was kind of a sweet little um, sweet little moment, man. Yeah, to Mr. Saxon. You know what? I'll drink again. To Saxon and you guys. So, on that, what we didn't like. Sorry, I'm going to burp. Don't put that in. Even when I first saw it. You know, I thought the ending, the matte paintings, I thought it was fairly dated. Uh, But watching it fairly recently, I let it go. You know, I let that go. What I didn't like, the main thing is how fucking inept Freddy was. He's like a keystone cop, man. He can do anything right. You know, like the whole movie, he's showing up, doing what he's got to do. But here now it's in his world. And there's, you know, Nancy and the kid. He can't pull it off. And that's really the main thing that bothered me. And also, he's a bit more silly. No, no, that, that's, yes. Yeah, so this is very important, man. They were so good at keeping him in the background and being so creepy. And he was this entity. He was Freddy Krueger, but the movie says he, he's, 
he was an entity that lived before Freddy, but liked the clothes, so he kept it on kind of thing, which I thought was an interesting little take. But they just stab him and they punch him. Like, why is he able to even get hurt? In our world, it makes sense, but they're not in our world. Like, she, she took the sleeping pills and become in the dream world. So in this, he's weak in the... Like, really, I, I got to be honest, the rules in this are, are a little bit haphazard. Like, I don't think they thought him out. He's able to affect the real world through... His, his, his coming is, I think, told through the um, earthquakes. He's able to like, play things on the TV in the real world. So I don't really get it. But in his world, he's, he's a bitch. He's, you know, I don't like the fact that they could stab him. I don't like they could punch him. I don't like they could push him. I thought, and then like, you're, you're right. He becomes, he, he started talking more. And I hated yeah. that. Yeah. And he, and he showed like walking around. I'm like, no, no, man, you got to shoot him differently. You got this. This isn't like he became Freddy in the, the last 10 minutes. And it was kind of lame. I didn't mind the ant paintings, even though it looked kind of cheap. But that was kind of fun. But the morphing is it too, man. Yeah, the, yeah, where he becomes like the he becomes yeah. like a devil. I'm yeah, like, and there's something. Ah, yeah. ah, it almost seemed like a rewrite. I don't think it was because Wes Craven had pretty much control. But it's it's almost like they didn't know how to finish it off. I almost would have yeah. gone for a more's less. But the fact that they're just stabbing with a knife and then stabbing his tongue and then pushing him fire, it's like, but he controls the world. Why is that fire killing him? Yeah. And I know it's it's the, the book and the whole um handsome yeah, got burned. Thing. But Christ I don't, when he that got doesn't make killed. any sense. Now he's getting burned in his dream world or whatever it is. And it's like, so the entity that's been around for millions of years gets defeated because it gets yeah, locked to the they, door. They shouldn't have gone into his world. They should have stayed in real life to feed him in a, maybe in a similar way that he was defeated in the original. You know, bring him out of the dream world. He gets killed for real. Yeah. Or find a way to shut the door to the world. I don't know. Or, or and in a way that it, he survives and he'll never die. That'd have been cool. I don't, you know, like... Imagine I, but, he kills Nancy, kills the kid, roll, yeah. credit, roll credits. Yeah. Dude, I'm in. I, but I'm willing to overlook it because everything else is so good and because... So fucking good. You know, Freddie said, for as much as I enjoy the parts, <clears throat> it is dumb. But it's a little heartbreaking. I, I really wish we, I could find out why. I mean, Wes has passed, so there's, there's no answers. Yeah, maybe that. it's in the uh, Never Sleep Again doc. I mean, if there's one point of reference that explored so many things. Maybe I, I it mean, was a reshoot for all we know. Who knows? You know, maybe New Line said, yo, we need more Freddy. Oh, who knows? You know, well, I'm talking out of my, I am literally talking out of my yeah, ass. Yeah, no, 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 I agree. I, agree. Yeah, I, I yeah. almost, I want to interview Bob Shea. And be like, hey, how did the last act that go? And is it the same? Say two things. Number one, you know, this is the second Elm Street theme show that we do in a row. And I'm really enjoying uh, revisiting uh, the franchise. It's, uh, you know, like I said, I went and got myself a Freddy t-shirt. I'm kind of like, it's bringing me back to my Freddy mania. You know, obviously I, I'm going to rewatch the one I've seen the least, which is the remake, I never liked, to be honest. But I'm kind of excited to rewatch it because I haven't watched it many times. So I don't remember much. Leading to, because I'm all over the fucking place. Have you heard about the news that Blumhouse wants to acquire the rights to Nightmare on Elm Street and bring back Robert England? Have you heard about that? I have. How do you feel about that? Here's the thing, man. I'll be honest. Uh, Jason Blum seems like a decent dude. I don't know. He doesn't say anything that bothers me. Um, but I feel Blumhouse movies are are kind of like the the modern Charles Band movies with more money, where like he's able to find a way to do things cheap. And so the difference, but the difference is, is I think Blum's output is very hit or miss. So there's some ones I'm like, oh, this is good. I like this. And there's some that I, I don't like. Yeah. I'm the only person in the world that hated Halloween 2018. I hate it. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, we went through that. Uh... Yeah, but yeah. I, I almost want somebody else to have it that isn't about pumping out movies so quickly. But at the same time, I guess, who else? Uh, England coming back. Okay, here's the thing. Did you see England play Freddy in that in The Goldbergs? Yes. It looked like shit. It Thank looked you. like complete shit. And it was a terrible. I mean, I love it. Look, this is not a, a you know that man has done more for for movies than I will ever do. So it's not a, a a swipe at him. But I thought the makeup was atrocious, and I thought his acting was bad too. I mean, I think that the point of it is supposed to be jokey. It's one of those things where I'm at that age now. I realize that everything I get more of from a different era sucks. So I want to say England had ended on a fucking high note, like George Costanza. I'd rather somebody else come in and, and try it or change uh, it. But I don't see it. I don't see it. that. That's the problem. Which is it's going to have to be. It's not. I don't see anybody history. else. I think I'm Haley ready. did a good job. I think the movie sucked, but I thought he was fine in it. I think he's a good actor. He could have. He could have with better makeup and. Yeah, but he wasn't Freddy. He was Freddy, but he wasn't Freddy. But that's what. That's the future of the the, the franchise, man. That's or we point. let it or we let it die. But the question is. You know, yeah. nobody leaves money on the table. So you're in the film business more than I, I don't know anything about that shit. If I was, if it's up to me, I'd let it die. But there's going to be some guy with money that's going to want to reboot yeah. it once. So I don't, what do you do? 
It's your business. Like, well, look, I, I personally, I know Blumhouse is actually doing, and I don't know if it's a reboot or a sequel or a prequel or Exorcist. a remake of The Exorcist. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm actually, you know, really curious to see that. Mm-hmm. But with that aside, what's the last great Blumhouse movie that I that I loved? You know, and my taste, it's just my opinion, doesn't mean jack or shit. So yeah, Blumhouse doing Kruger. I think it's uh, a tall order because for anybody, really, I think it's a tall order without Wes Craven. You know what? Ask me after that Exorcist reboot, remake, pre-make, prequel, sequel, whatever the fuck it is. Let me see that and ask me again if I want Blumhouse to do Elm Street. Because if Firestarter, which they just pimped out yeah. of what we're in for, then I'd rather not. Yeah. I think New Nightmare is the perfect ending. It 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 comes full circle with the first entry, like we talked about. And I think it's great. If we wanted England back for another entry, we should talked about this ten years ago, twelve years ago. I mean, fucking New Nightmare came out ninety four. Actually, you know what? If there's one person, I don't think anybody will ever be like Rob. Robert England owns the role of Freddy. In my yes, opinion. it's his. It's his. And the, the dude in the remake did fine, but for me, still wasn't Freddy. And people were talking about Kevin Bacon at some point. Which I'm yeah, sure, you know, he kind of, he has that, you know, skinny yeah. thing going for him. I'm a, I'm a fan of Bacon, you know? If I had to pick one guy to play Freddy, it would be Michael Shannon. Oh, so fuck, Michael Shannon's a man. I think he could do something really fucked up with it. You need a younger guy, though, to do more sequels. See, Freddy will have to be James Bond because he talks. Jason yeah, he's on the Myers. Rank. As long as whoever plays Freddy is not 50 pounds overweight, I think you're going to... Well, no. But you need to be able to sit in the naked chair for eight hours and last for six oh. movies, which could take place. You know, like, you know, I, I look at that as like you need a young man just to 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 lead on. And we will get another Freddy in our life. Robert England's going to be our Connery. It's how my dad acts anytime I talk about any of the Bond. He just he gets this roll over his eyes. He's just like ah, Bonds Connery. It's like I know Dad, but we got other Bonds. So it's like I I don't want to be my dad here, but it's like I I'm going to be. It's going to be my legacy, which is eventually. John, years from now, we're old and gray. There's going to be the fifth. Are you there, bro? Are you there? Na- well, I mean, it's going to be a Nightmare on Street entry, and it's going to be the fourth one with a new actor. And it'll probably be good, but I'm going to be like, eh, it's not Russia with love. It's like, ah, oh, I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Right. If you haven't seen Wes Craven's New Nightmare, I highly recommend you watch the first Elm Street movie and then watch it right after, back to back, and call it a night well spent. Um, if you've seen it, Tell us your comments uh, about the film. Yeah, two things I got in my, in my head, and you know, you give me your opinion, Lance. Number one, I, I kind of like this whole like paying attention to the comments uh, to decide what we're going to talk about. So I'd like to encourage you all to uh, keep like tossing titles our way. Where we have our, our secretary who copy pastes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we don't have a secretary. It's us. Yeah. It's oh, not. Yeah. So keep you know pumping your suggestions, and I, don't know, I just had a fucked up idea. You tell me what you think. Even though, you know, if you don't like it, I'll still do it. Okay, well, John, until next time, sir, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, I'm around if you need me. And uh, guys, if you could help us out, please subscribe. Help us out. Uh, I got four girls I got to feed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. All right, guys. So, thank you for uh, sticking around. Cheers to you all. Without you, we are nothing. So, all right. yeah. To all my friends. To all my to friends. All my friends. To all my friends.